Rande Gede de Bata, Ramba Cadus, Ibran de Lebedes, Riva Landre Gede Bosch, Ibran de Lebedes, La Icalus, Ibran de la Bosch, Ibran de Lebedes, Rumba Cadis, Cabalandria de Debede de Bedesha, Robundis Caburian de la Badus, Ibran de Lebedes, Rufutalambra de la Baban de Lebedes, Rumba Catila Baban de Lebedia Dosha, Rembi Catelebe de Bedes, Cabede Lebedusa, Ricaluski, Barandi de Tisco Borodusa, Limbra Catus Cabaran de Lesutaran de Ledesha, Rumba Tila Dos, Ibran de Ledesha. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Rande Gedes Colobo Bodosh, Cabede Lebedusha, Yambra Catulu Bubudush, Cabede Gedusha. Ramba tala baba da basha da la buki da baba de de bebe dosa. Randi ke tele vi anduri ada sa randi ada bosha. Rembe de le bedesh ki bados ki barande ke de desha. Rinda supra da vi andi le bedes ku bandi abu bondi. Randi shka bados i brande le desh o branda la baba dosha. Randi ada bosi branda la bosha. Jesus we worship you, we celebrate you, we magnify you. Yeshua we exalt and extol you. We say Yeshua, we bless you. We bless you. Rande gede beisha, be thou exalted, Yeshua. Rande ski borunde gede gede desh ke be de gede desha. Rumbu kotolo borosh ke be de gede desh ke be de gede desha. Rumbia katala bara basha balandre gede be desha. Yembre ketele be de be de be dusha. Rampa tala baba dusha. Be glorified, be glorified, Lord. Be glorified, Lord. Blessed be your name forever. Be thou exalted, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have worship. Amen. Lord, we celebrate you. We glorify you. We thank you for another time in your presence. We thank you for another opportunity to learn at your feet. We thank you for another opportunity to be prepared for the new year. We give you praise and glory. We want to thank you for six meetings already gone. Thank we you bless you, Lord. Yes, Lord. It has been by you and by you alone. We thank you for your word that has come with power. We thank you for transformation. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for enlightenment. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for illumination. We say be exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this meeting. We thank you for you are here to do us good. Yes, Holy Spirit, we recognize your presence. We glorify you and we know, Holy Spirit, that in this meeting, our life shall not remain the same after this meeting in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sweet Spirit of the living God, we welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. Yes, we ask that you do what you alone as God can do. Glorify Jesus. Glorify Jesus, Holy Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Be glorified forever. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. amen to Jesus. Amen. Once again, we want to appreciate God for six meetings gone. And this is the seventh meeting. Amen to Jesus. Amen. In every meeting, God has been adding to us and he has been making our lives better. Amen to Jesus. Amen. We want to welcome everyone who is participating in this meeting from wherever you are participating in this meeting from. We want to assure you that by the grace of God, you are going to get a word from God that will transform your life forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are going to get a word that will be relevant for the new year for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. This meeting is put in place for us to bet the new year and the new decade. And so this is a meeting of instructions. It's a meeting of revelations. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we trust God that today's meeting is going to give us a vital revelation, a vital information that we need to bet the new year. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Praise God forevermore. La, uh, 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 on, 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 um, on Wednesday, we started up a series which are, by the help of the Holy Spirit, that titled How to Possess Your Possession. Amen. And Wednesday was wonderful. We thank God for what we learned on Wednesday. Amen to Jesus. Please, for every one of us, let's take a, let's take advantage of the uh, podcast provision in the um, online um, podcast and Grace Life and um, listen to every teaching that we do not participate in. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Please, let's go over this teaching again and again because they're important for the next year. Amen to Jesus. Amen. So today, I'm going to be continuing that teaching, um, How to Possess Your Possession. And today, I'm going to be talking on a subtitle, Avoid Delays. Avoid delays. Avoid delays. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, delays are 
things that come up in our lives that there are times we can avoid them. And one thing about delays is that they weary you and they stretch you. The strength you will need to cover a particular distance, when delay is added to that distance, it wearies you from covering that distance. Amen to Jesus. Mm. And, and delays are actually not, in, not, not very palatable to every everybody, every individual, whether you be Christian, whether you be um, um, not a Christian, delays are not palatable to everybody. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. Now, there are delays that we can avoid. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. There are delays we can avoid. And when we can avoid them, it's important we avoid them. Praise the Lord forevermore. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. From our previous lessons, we learned that the, 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 the that the, the, the culture of the, of, the, of the believer, of the Christian, is, is, is faith. Our lifestyle is faith, and that is our culture. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And uh, we understood that faith is the only life that God has given to us, his children, to live. And we also learned that when we don't live by faith, we sin against God. The Bible says anything that is not of faith is sin. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Amen. And when we sin against God, we, we limit our abilities to collect the blessings of God. Amen to Jesus. Praise the Lord. And when we do that, we actually we actually enlist ourselves into the school of this favor. Praise God. Now, most of the time, some of the things we go through, they are not God's doing. They are our own doing. Amen to Jesus. Yes. And so that's why as you grow in your Christian work, you become more sensitive and more careful to ensure that you not inflict some things on yourself and at the end of the thing that it is God or the devil that is responsible for it. Some of the things we go through, some of the, let me use the word, the negative things we go through, the devil is not responsible for it. Are we, are we together? It's as a result of maybe our ignorance or our insufficient knowledge or some reasons or the other that are traceable to us. Amen to Jesus. And these things can be what? Avoided. The truth is that even when we are faithful by not living in line with God's word, amen, God remains faithful. Praise God forevermore. And the, the, the beautiful thing about it is that when we even act in unfaithfulness, God is faithful. Amen. So God, 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 the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 verse 13 says, if we believe not, yet he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. Are, are we together? God cannot deny himself because of us. So that's why when we even act in unfaithfulness, God remains faithful to himself. Amen to Jesus. The actual fact is that God is not actually faithful to us. God is faithful to himself. And his faithfulness to himself has extend to us. Are we together? Yeah. So God is not faithful because of us. He's faithful because of himself. That's the reason why even when we are unfaithful, he remains faithful to himself. So his faithfulness to himself, what extends to us. This makes us understand that Faith and faithfulness can only be issues and variables with man, not with God. Are we together? So faith and faithfulness can only be issues with man. Are we together? And they can only be variables with man, but not with God. With God, faith and faithfulness are constants. They are constants. Are we together? They are constants. The reason for this is that God cannot change his mind concerning blessing us. He has blessed us and he can't change that. Neither can he take his blessings back. Because they were not collected by us. Are you getting what I'm saying? They just remain there in the heavens as uncollected blessings. So when God blesses us, he doesn't take them back and say, okay, because he didn't collect it, I'm going to take it back. No, God does not do that. No, neither does God change his mind concerning blessing us because we are unfaithful. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why he's faithful to himself. I blessed you, I blessed you. If you don't take it, that's your cup of tea. I've done my part. I'm not going to change my mind concerning blessing you. I'm not going to take the blessing from you. Amen to Jesus. No matter about 23 verse 19 says, God is not man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said it and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken and shall he not make it good? He is not man that he should repent. Now in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, when, when, you, use, when you see questions like this, they are not as it were asking you questions. Are you getting me? This um, um, manner of conver uh, conversation in the Hebrew is not to ask a question. It's, as a, it's actually what a, an affirmation. Are you getting me? So now, if you look at it, there it says, "Had he said it, shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good?" He's actually saying in the original Hebrew, he's actually saying, "He has said it, and he shall do it. He has spoken, and he shall make it good." That's what this kind of these kind of questions actually imply. They are actually affirmations. Are we together? Yeah. Amen. Number 23 verse, uh, uh, number two, Romans 11 verse 29 says, 
for the gifts and calling of God and without repentance. That's the King James Version. The International Standard Version says, for God's gifts and calling never change. They never what? Change. The New English Translation says, for the gifts and call of God are irrevocable. Does this make us understand that when God gives, he doesn't revoke it? When God gives, he doesn't take it back? So if you don't collect it, it's, it's your business. He has already given and he has closed that chapter. Are we together? Amen. Praise God. So unfaithfulness does not have adverse effect on God. It actually has effect on us. Why? Because God is faithful to himself. That's why when he gives, he doesn't take it back. Are we together? Yes. Amen. Now, example, an example to Boutrez, that, that's the reason why even if you're unfaithful, he remains what? Faithful. An example to Boutrez, this, um, this truth, is Abraham. Abraham. Now, Abraham was unfaithful to God for a moment, and this was due to the fact that he did not have full understanding of the promise of God concerning childbearing. Are you getting what I'm saying? The reason why he was unfaithful was for a moment was because he didn't have the reason why he was unfaithful for a moment was because he didn't have full understanding he have a full grasp of the promise of god concerning um child bearing which god gave to him in genesis 15 verse 4. look at genesis 15 verse 4 it says and behold the word of the lord came unto him saying this shall not be thine head. This was when Abraham was asking God if Eliezer of Damascus would be his head. He says, and the word of the Lord came to him and said, This shall not be thine head, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine head. Now God told him precisely, he said, Eliezer will not be your head. Eliezer did not come from your bowels. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, but he that will come from your bowels will be your head. Now, what is very, this is a very serious and very slim situation. And this thing is very important for us as we walk into the new year. Are you getting what I'm saying? Being that God had told Abraham that his hair will come out from his own burials, he saw nothing wrong when Sarah told him to have a child through her guy. So he accepted it. Are you getting me? <laughs> because it, 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 after he said, okay, God said it will be for my burial. Now, her guy is giving a proposition, a proposal to me. I'm sorry, Sarah is giving a proposal to me. Okay, have a child with her. guys. okay, after all, this child is going to be from my boy. So that means it's in line with the promise. Are you getting it? So he accepted. Now, most of us have had different understanding about Abraham accepting Sarah's proposal over there. Even me, I had different understanding. But this understanding just came to me. Are you getting it? Light came into this understanding. It was as a result of imperfect understanding of the promise. That's why Abraham accepted Hagar. Not because he was eyeing Hagar. Not because he even liked Hagar. Are you getting what I'm saying? Not because even Sarah brought the proposal to him. Are you getting me? It was neither because of Hagar, nor was it because of Sarah that he did it. The reason why he did it was because he felt, he believed that it was in line with the promise of God, the will of God. Ah, God says it will be my bowel. That the child will come out. So any vehicle that brings that carries the child, any 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 woman that carries the child does not matter. What matters the most is that it comes from my boy. That was where he was thinking from. Are you getting me? Look at in, in uh, um Genesis 16, 16 verse says Sarah said, and Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord, the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go, I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. Why? Because he felt that this was just the will of God. In fact, this is just God. <laughs> That's why we have to be careful. Not every good proposal that looks like it's confirmation is God's word. Are you getting me? Or not to him that Haggai was not the vehicle to convey the promised child to earth. And Ishmael was not the promised child. So Abraham acted unfaithfully due to insufficient understanding. Now let me understand something. See, for you to get, for us to get the fullness of God's promise manifested in our life, we must not work with insufficient understanding. Are you getting what I'm saying? We must not even work with assumptions. 2021 will not answer to assumptions. It will not answer to insufficient understanding. That's why this is the time for you to ask God, dito, 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 dito. God, I need clarity. 
So I need to be clear on this matter, on this matter, on this matter, on the, before you just jump into running to conclusions. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hey, praise God. Amen. And most of us do this most of the time. Are you getting what I'm saying? We do this most of the time. If you look at Genesis chapter 17, verse 16 to 19, you will understand fully well that that guy was not meant to be the vehicle. Are you getting me? And you also understand fully well that Ishmael was not the promised child. After in Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter, chapter 16, Abraham, um, Ishmael was born to Abraham when he was 86 years old. Are you getting me? And then in Genesis chapter 17, God comes and tells Abraham. Um, you know, change your name from Abraham to Abraham, and then also change your, your wife's name from Sarai to Sarah, and he says she shall also be a mother of nations, and you know, I, I'm just trying to paraphrase what God said, and Abraham fell on his face and laughed, I was like, wow, wow. I said, okay, God, he, I, I can say I have a child at this old age, he said, okay, God, no problem, let, let just, just, just bless Ishmael for me. In other words, uh, there's no need looking for another one again, one has come, and you get what I'm saying, despite the fact that he was not fully, fully, um, he didn't fully comprehend the content of the promise. Now, he worked without a full comprehension. I also wanted to validate his insufficient comprehension. So God, just bless Ishmael. Are you getting me? Yeah. But God said, no, 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 no. It's not Ishmael. Yeah, I bless him, but he's not your hair. He came from your boils, but he's not what? Your hair. Praise God forevermore. This act of Moses came as a result. This unfaithfulness of Moses, or sorry, of Abraham, came as a result of what? Insufficient comprehension. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are we understanding it? So as we walk into 2021, we must be detailed on a lot of things. We must be able to sit with God and say, God, on this matter, I need full clarity. And don't just jump into action if you do not confront God. Another thing there, another reason why Abraham could also act unfaithfully due to insufficient comprehension was that when Sarai brought the proposal of her God to him, he did not go to God to ask God, God, should I go into her guy? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He just ran. Oh, yes, it's a beautiful proposal. After all, God told me it to be for my boys. See, there are things that you don't just run into. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are things you have to re-ask God again. Even when the proposal looks beautiful, still go back to God. See, over the years in life and in ministry, I've learned one principle. Never be in a hurry to make decisions. I've learned it the hardest way. No matter how juicy it may look, no matter how beautiful the proposal may look, throw it a thousand times at me. I would first go and confirm. You may say, oh, I'm a slow decision maker. No problem. I better make slow decisions and be in the center of God's will and act in total faith and faithfulness and fully comprehend the promise of God than act fast and not fully comprehend and act in unfaithfulness. Are we together? And this is a very important lesson for every one of us. But although Abraham did this, God did not change his mind concerning giving him Isaac. Are you getting what I'm saying? God still gave him Isaac even after he was unfaithful to God and the promise of God for a moment. Are we together? Yes. Why? The, faithful, the faithfulness, gifts, and calling of God are constant irrespective of our variableness in faith. Are you getting me? God remain a const God's faithfulness and gifts will remain constant. Yes, we may vary, but God remains constant. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. He will still do his giving, but it remains constant. But even if you are, we are not faithful, even if our faithfulness varies, his givings and his faithfulness remains constant. But there is a little challenge here. Are you getting me? I know some of us, some of Christians will be excited after all, the blessings of God are with our friend, so let's just live the life. No, there is still a little challenge. Are you getting me? Although God's faithfulness is a constant, Abraham momentary unfaithfulness makes us understand that when we do not live by faith for a moment like Abraham did, we create an Ishmael for ourselves. God was not the one, in quote, who created Ishmael. Abraham was the one who created what? Ishmael. So when we run out, when we run into conclusions, when we run into decisions without totally understanding the, 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 the full picture of God's word concerning the matter, we end up creating an Ishmael for ourselves. Are we together? Yes. By so doing, we delay the manifestations of the blessings of God in our lives. Yes, God has blessed us. But by creating an Ishmael, we delay the manifestation of the blessing. 
Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's not enough to say the blessings and gifts of God that we turn repentance. It's not enough to say that. The issue is, are you getting the blessings at the right time? Are they manifesting at the right time? Are you getting it? Yeah. How do I understand this truth? The name Ishmael and Isaac respectively explains this truth. Now let's go to these names. The name Ishmael is a um, Hebrew is, is a Hebrew word, Yishmael. Yishmael. And it means God be here. <laughs> God will hear. In other words, it's an indefinite hope. Indefinite hope. God will hear. So when we God hear, we are not sure. Are you know something? Indefinite hope. God will hear. When will he hear? We are not sure. That's why when people come and say, it shall be well. When shall he be well? We are not sure. And you get what I'm saying? Ishmael was an indefinite hope. Are you getting me? And let's look at the name Isaac. Isaac is the Hebrew word Yishak. And it means he laughs. He laughs. He laughs. Why does he laugh? Genesis 21 verse 6. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that here will laugh with me. Why does he laugh? Because the promise of God has manifested. You see the difference? Ishmael, God be here. Indefinite hope. Isaac, he laughs. Because the promise has been manifested. Are you seeing what I'm saying? This makes us understand that Abraham, Abraham's wait for 25 years was not totally the will of God. Are you know what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue. You see, and that's why I say this, 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 this understanding, I've been studying, I've studied this part of scripture. In fact, I studied this some weeks ago. I went through it some weeks ago, but I've never had this understanding before. Are you getting me? Years of reading this scripture, I've never had this understanding. And many of us say, ah, Abraham left the promised land. Abraham um, obeyed God at 75, and he got his child at 100, 25 years of waiting. And we believe that in 25 years, it took, the whole 25 years was God's way of teaching him how to wait. But I understand something here. With this understanding of Ishmael, it means that that whole 25 years was not totally all about God. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was not totally the will of God. Part of the years arose as a result of delays caused by Abraham's momentary unfaithfulness to God and his promise. Part of the years arose because of Ishmael. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Furthermore, in Genesis 16, verse 11, where the angel of the Lord told Haggai to name her son Ishmael, he gave the reason for that. What was the reason? He said it was because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Had. That's, that's old King James English. It actually means has, heard. In other words, past tense, double past tense. The Lord has heard thy afflictions. Not the Lord we hear. Are you understand what I'm saying? He said, the Lord has heard thy afflictions. Then he said, give your child, the Lord we hear. Are, are you understand what I'm saying? But he says, this is the reason why you are giving your child, the Lord we hear, because the Lord has heard. <laughs> so there's a little... Contradiction there is that not so? What was this contradiction for? Why was this contradiction there? And you understand what I'm saying? Now look at Genesis 16, verse 11. It says, and the, and the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Ishmael means the Lord we hear. Because the Lord had heard the affliction. The Lord we hear because the Lord has heard. That's a little contradiction. Are you getting what I'm saying? But there's no contradiction there. We must go into the understand into the mind of God to understand why He does what He does. Are you getting me? Amen. Yeah. Why the reason for the name Ishmael spoke of faith? The Lord has heard. The reason the Lord has heard that speaks of what faith is that also yeah. faith is now the Lord has heard. The name itself spoke of hope. The Lord we hear. That's hope. Is that also? And this hope had no timing attached to it. It was an indefinite hope. Another thing to know here is that the name Ishmael was not directed to Hagar. Neither was it directed to Ishmael himself. <laughs> because God had already heard Hagar's cry and answered. Are you getting me? The name Ishmael was directed to Abraham. So by giving Ishmael his name, God was telling Abraham, I will hear you. I will hear you. 
Every day Abraham saw or called the Ishmael, God told him, I will hear you. But the time to hear was not known. So Ishmael was, was God's way of telling Abraham, you, you acted in unfaithfulness because you didn't have a full comprehension. Don't worry, I will still hear you. And you get what I'm saying? But the timing, you cannot, I can, I will not tell you. Why? Because you have delayed it by your action. Ishmael was in his early teens when Isaac was born. So the presence of Ishmael meant self-inflicted delay of nothing less than 10 years for Abraham. Ishmael was born at, Abraham was 86 when Ishmael was born. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaac was born when Abraham was 100. That means 14 years gap. Are you understand what I'm saying? So it meant that it meant that the presence of Ishmael delayed the promise for 14 years. But that's why this God kept telling Abraham, I will hear you. Abraham deferred his hope by himself due to momentarily momentary unfaithfulness. This he could have avoided, and this definitely made his heart sick. Why? Proverbs 13, verse 12, it says, Hope deferred, make it the heart sick. Are you understand what I'm saying? The reason for this was because he, God told him, the child shall come from a boils. And when the proposal was made to him, he didn't go back to God and say, okay, God, yes, you said the child shall come from my boils, but is the vehicle to bring the child, that guy, are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He quickly jumped at the proposal. And he acted in unfaithfulness because he didn't fully comprehend. And his lack of comprehension was not because God was, was dumb. His lack of comprehension was because he didn't go back to God. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, in 2021, you have a lot of proposal. And some of them may look like what God is saying. But don't be in a hurry to jump at them. You must always go back to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must always go back to God. Despite this, God kept telling Abraham, I will hear you. What a merciful God. What a loving God. What a faithful God. Israel, Ishmael was a physical show of God's mercy to Abraham's momentary unfaithfulness. This one that portrays that God cannot change his mind concerning blessings he has given to you. Are we together? Despite the fact that Abraham had a momentary unfaithfulness, God kept telling him, I will hear you. So Ishmael was God's physical proof to show that he was merciful to Abraham. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. yes, Abraham, you've done something. You've not done it right. It will only delay, but it will what? It will happen. And this delay, I'm not the cause. You are the cause. But you know what I'm going to do? To make you know that I will still do it, I will encourage you till it happens. Are you understand something? Yes. Some of us, we are giving birth to Ishmael, and we are saying, God, when? God, when? No, the Ish you are already giving birth to an Ishmael. It will happen, but you have to make do with your Ishmael till when the time of Isaac comes. Are you gonna say yes. the Ishmael is still a mercy from God? But if you have not acted so promptly, you should have gotten your Isaac without any Ishmael. Are you understand? Yes. You should have gotten your Isaac without any Ishmael. And so this this delay made Abraham's heart sick. Because it was a self-inflicted delay. But when Isaac was born, Abraham laughed because God had heard and answered him. His now faith in the spirit realm had become a now manifestation. This sure was a tree of life. The same Proverbs 13 verse 12 b says, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. This is the reason why Isaac was born when Isaac was born, God prompted Sarah in the guise of protecting the heirship for her son to tell Abraham to send Ishmael away from the house. Have you seen that? This was because Ishmael's assignment was over as God has already answered Abraham. So Ishmael was not needed in the house anymore according to God's plan and purpose for Abraham. Are you getting what I'm saying? Genesis 21 verse 10 says, Wherefore said, she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bond woman and her son, for the son of this bond woman shall not be here with my son, even with Isaac. The, the, the same, the, the, the verse 11 to 12 says, And the thing was grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. But look at verse, verse, verse 12. It says, And God said unto Abraham, 
Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the love and because of thy bond woman. In all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. This shows that God was the one who prompted Sarah. Are you know what I'm saying? He was in support of Sarah. Cast the bond woman and her son out. Cast the guy out. His assignment is over. His assignment was to show me, was my his assignment there was for me to keep telling Abraham, I will hear you. I will hear. now I've heard him. What is he saying there again? <laughs> Are you know what I'm saying? So let me tell you something. Some of us have given birth to Ishmael's because of, of our inability to go back to God and confirm a lot of things. Now, if you, if God has, if God has to give you an Isaac, you must be ready to cast away the Ishmael. But some of us want to hold Isaac and Ishmael at the same time, and it doesn't work. Are we together? Are we together? So we must understand this: that although God remains faithful and merciful to us in our faithfulness. We delay ourselves when we act in unfaithfulness, and this makes our hearts. As we prepare for 2021, be precise on instructions. And you understand what I'm saying? And when offers begin to come that may look like it, there's a popular saying that says, all that glitters is not gold. When offers begin to come that look like it, go back to God and confirm because you we cannot afford to delay ourselves in 2021. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of us actually delayed ourselves in 2020, but I'm telling you from experience in my work with God and in life, I am not ready for any self-inflicted delay again. Are you getting me? I'm not ready for any Ishmael again. I'm in the season of Isaacs. I rather wait on God for three days I'd rather wait on God for three months to get my Isaac than swiftly jump into Haggai and get an Ishmael that will delay me for 14 years. Mm. <laughs> Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes. This is a very serious issue. In 2021, we must avoid delays. The idea comes beautiful. Thank God is a beautiful idea. But go back to God. Seek the face of God. God, I know you told me in 2021, I will do this, I will do that. Now, this thing looks like what you said, but is this what you actually said? Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, that's the way to step into 2021. In 2021, we must remain faithful to his, God's word and avoid self-inflicted delays. On every matter, we must go back to God. Let no proposal sound juicy to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Let no proposal sound beautiful to you. When people come with their proposal, they have their private interests. Why did Sarah give her guy to Abraham? She said, she said, seeing that God has not caused me to give birth. Are you seeing that? Seeing that God has not caused me to give birth. Now go and told my, my hand with her guy. So the Sarah gave have guy to Abraham for her selfish reason. Let me tell you something. Everybody that will bring a proposal to you in 2021 will bring it for a selfish reason, not for your reason. Yes. Nobody has an interest at her. Only God has an interest at her. So when people bring their selfish proposals to you, no matter how they look like God's proposal, go back to God. Go back to God. In 2021, in 2021, Never be in a hurry. Never be in a hurry. Because when you rush, the actual fact is that you delay yourself. I'm talking from experience. When you rush, you say, oh, I don't have time to confirm from God. When you rush without confirming from God, you add 14 years to your, to, to 14 years of delay to your promise. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But even if it takes you three months to hear from God, even if it takes you six months to hear from God, when you hear from God and you are sure that you have heard from God on that matter, I tell you, speed will be given to you and it will be laughter. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? In 2021, we must never jump at proposals. We must avoid delays. We must confirm. We must be clear on the matter from God before we jump into the matters. Can I hear you lift up your hands this afternoon and say, God, help me in 2021. Amen. Help me in 2021. Help me to be clear. Help me to be clear on matters. 
help me to confirm from you. No proposal will be juicy to take my attention. Somebody's talking to God. Somebody's talking to God. Lord, in 2021, cause me to be clear on every matter. Cause me to confirm from you before I take any decision. In 2021, cause me not to jump into ideas. Cause me not to jump into proposals. Cause me not to jump into what may seem good. Lord, help me to confirm, to be precise from you. Cause me to be to wait on you on every matter. Not to rush into matters. Somebody is talking to God. Lift up your voice. Lift up your hands. Talk to God. Lord, in 2021, I refuse to be to be to to, to enforce delays on myself. I infuse self-imputed delays in 2021. I refuse to finish taking the step, but then I discovered I did not hear thoroughly. No, I refuse it in 2021. In 2021, I will be precise. In 2021, I receive the grace for precision. In 2021, I received the grace for thoroughness. Le suta rata basha ibra kata la barote ke telebe swa ri ke telebe supra mandaliatosa in granda la baba. Somebody is talking to God. Somebody is talking to God. Le supa li kani baranda la bashu talamba gida mandori baba rata reketo se ke telebe bedesha rakokoti kala da baba rebele bebe bedosha bebe baba baho ripele de bebe 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 dosha rape ke telebe bedesha. Are you talking to God? Lord, in 2021, I must be precise on the matters. I must be clear on the matters. I must hear thoroughly from you. Hey, Open my ears to hear clearly on matters. I will not assume. In 2021, I will not assume. In 2021, I will not assume. Let us sit as the No assumptions in 2021. No assumptions in 2021. No assumptions in 2021. No assumptions in 2021. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Lord, I pray for everyone. Everyone who has Hear this word. I pray, Lord, for the grace to be precise. Amen. To confirm from you. Amen. To be sure. Amen. To be accurate Amen. on every matter Amen. before we jump into them. Amen. That grace, let it drop on us now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, as we pray to never walk with assumptions, but to get clarity on every matter. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. Lord, we pray that as we enter into the year, every promise you give to us, every promise you give to us, we shall get clarity on the matters. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. we shall not run and jump at proposals. Yes, we shall not jump at things that may sound juicy and sweet. Yes, no, we shall not jump at them. Amen. Yes, we know your mercy is there, but we don't want to, to impute, inflict delays on ourselves. Yes, yes. Lord, we pray. Grace to hear you clearly. Amen. Grace to be precise. Amen. We receive Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I pray this moment that our ears be open. Amen. Our eyes be open. Amen. Our hearts be open. Amen. To receive from you. Yes, and receive thoroughly. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for everyone who has not received Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. Without the, Jesus, you cannot, you cannot hear God. Not, never can you hear him and walk in his will. So if you want to say this prayer, say that to me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. But today I come to you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I denounce sin and the devil. I choose to follow you all the days of my life. And I choose to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone who has prayed this prayer. I ask for the grace to serve and follow you be released upon them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord and King, in Jesus' name. Now, you, you, I, I, want, I want to encourage you to please this prayer, to keep praying it. See, there's nothing as good as when you are sure about a matter. 
when you are sure about what God is saying, it's the best thing that can happen to you in your, in your journey in life. So I want you to keep praying this prayer. And I trust that in 2021, you will make decisions that are in the center of God's will. Amen. And you will see your Isaac fall into your hands Amen. and you will receive speed in the name of Jesus. Amen. No self-imputed delays in 2021. No self-imputed delays Amen. in 2021 in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to pray for every one person who is sick under the sound of my voice. I cause sickness and disease. Amen. I cause frustrations. Amen. I cause sickness in every part of your body. Amen. And I decree that by the stripes of Jesus, you are made every with whole Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be healed. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for the time you shared with us. I want to encourage you to keep attending every of this meeting because every meeting has a word from God for you that will kind of carry you to your next level. Amen. God bless you. Grace to you. Amen.